It's a very jaunty tune. It's the tune Sunny Side of the Street. It's Hollywood Studios. It's a very jaunty place. It can be super jaunty or the camera wiggles. We paid $100 to hang out at Disney's Hollywood Studios after it closes. Hey, ma'am, fam, we're here at Disney's Hollywood Studios for the Disney After Hours event. This is a specially ticketed event taking place now through the spring at both Hollywood Studios and Magic Kingdom. Your event ticket includes three hours after the park after it closes, characters, included snacks, and low weights at some of the most popular attractions in the park. We're here to see just how much you can get done and have fun at the park after dark. All right, let's go. Disney After Hours are available at both Magic Kingdom and Disney's Hollywood Studios on select nights. And again, it's a specialty ticketed event, so you will need it in addition to or instead of your day ticket. Tickets start around $130 and run upwards of $150 in this park, but with discounts like an annual pass or Disney Vacation Club, you can get tickets for $99 to $119. We paid $99 to be here on a Wednesday night. Even though the event doesn't start officially until 9.30 p.m., you can actually enter the park a few hours early at 7 p.m. and stay all the way through 12.30. And like I said, there's a lot of fun to be had at this event. There's snacks, characters, special showings of certain entertainment, but the real appeal is how low the capacity is. It's an extremely limited ticketed event, so you shouldn't encounter many lines at the rides across the park. Now, not everything remains open, but most notably at this park, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance is included pending any technical difficulties, which we all know are a possibility here. But we are ready to hang out, have some fun. But since the park's still open, I think there's only one thing to do. Now, we don't know everything, but I do think we know the perfect way to kick off your Disney After Hours event here in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Uh, for those 21 and up. True. Step one, enter the park at 7 p.m. and get your wristband. Step two, go to your favorite bar. Step three, acquire beers. Step four. Cheers. Step five. Drink the beer. Unplanned step four, but cheers is important. Step six. Go see Fantasmic. Ooh, I like step six. It's the best step. Yeah, good step. So because the park doesn't officially close at the Magic Kingdom or Hollywood Studios until a few hours after you're let in at these parks, it gives you the opportunity to catch some nighttime spectaculars like the fireworks at Magic Kingdom or Fantasmic here at Hollywood Studios. And as a pro tip, while I usually recommend seeing the second Fantasmic, if you do that, you'll be cutting into your after hours, three hours of the event. It'll take about 45 minutes by the time you see the show and get out of the theater of that limited three hours. So because of that, if you can, I recommend seeing the first Fantasmic show. And then once the after hours begins, you can go on a ride palooza. Ride palooza? Patent pending. Oh, all right, well, I'll check the paperwork. Doesn't matter how many times I see Fantasmic, I'm gonna cry. That's true. Oh, it's just such a must-see. It's just such a must-see. And now we are headed over to the Chinese Theater because they do the projection shows on there at night, so we're gonna go see one of those. There are two projection shows they do on the Chinese Theater pretty much nightly, and I really like them and think they're very underrated. The first is called Disney Movie Magic. That one really celebrates live action movies in the Disney uh, universe. So things like Pirates of the Caribbean, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Guardians of the Galaxy. Very, very fun. And you'll see some underrated films. Uh, we missed that one, unfortunately, because getting out of the Fantasmic crowd, you know, 10,000 of your closest friends trying to exit at the same time. We got very close. Doesn't move real quick. Not at all. Uh, but this one that we're about to see is called The Wonderful World of Animation. And this one came out to celebrate 30 years of Disney's Hollywood Studios. It's a really fun show. I think these shows are just really sweet. They're basically big movie montages, which I love. I basically watch the Oscars for the montages. They actually do have a special showing of both of these shows during the After Hours event. 
but we figured there's nothing else to do right now. I'm not going to go jump in a line for a ride when they're going to be much shorter later True. and, and uh, might as well enjoy a show before the event officially kicks off. And that way we save all of our after hours time for rides and snacks. Listen, I know some people might not love those projection shows, but I do. I love a projection show. And anytime they invoke Walt or have his voice back. I also love how many underrated movies they feature in that show. Emperor's New Groove, Big Hero 6, Sleeping Beauty. Like, it's not just your heavy hitter headliners in this show. It's, it's lovely. <sighs> I recommend seeing it after Fantasmic. That way, you can let the crowd dissipate. You can watch the show and then you can go home, or if you're us, you can start after hours. Where are we Let's going start. first? Uh, well, I mean, we're here, Mickey and Minnie's Runway Railway. Walt did say it was all started by a mouse. It adds up, that's it, the math. Yeah, Walt said. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is now in the Chinese theater replacing, long ago, the great movie ride. It is an incredible attraction that is made f fun for the whole family. There is no height requirement for this, and it follows Mickey and Minnie through a series of scenes as you follow their shenanigans and escapades as they attempt to catch Goofy and his runaway train. Don't you mean runaway railway? Yes. Yes, I do. One of the benefits of the After Hours events like this is that the wait times for these attractions do drop drastically as folks exit the park when it closes who are not a part of the After Hours event. For example, we got into the park, there was a 60 minute posted wait time for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and right now, as this is the first attraction that we are going to for our After Hours event, the wait time is at five minutes. Now you will have to show your After Hours wristband that you receive when you check in to enter these attractions, so make sure that you've got those handy and come on in because uh, the party's just starting. Let's take a ride. fantastic ride oh, and better so because we literally walked on literally walk on such a cute ride i adore it and the event hadn't even officially started yet True. we're off the ride and it's 9 34 so we got on early so might as well try yeah i think next stop snacks oh yeah frequent snacks snack stop and then more rides let's do it one of the best parts of the event is that there's free snacks or included snacks, and I will tell you more about them, except for I've been very distracted by the cutest couple I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh my gosh, they're cute. Hi, Donald and Daisy. You look so cute. I love your outfits. So glamorous. <laughs> It's all her, isn't it? Yes, she's the queen. We know, yes. <laughs> Donald and Daisy were dancing. Yeah. They're so cute. Um, yeah, snacks. At the carts around the park, included with the event, there is popcorn, Mickey bars, Mickey ice cream sandwiches, the sugar-free strawberry bars, as well as sodas and water. I'm not a huge soda drinker, but when it's free, I'm gonna have to pee so much. You'll find them at various carts throughout the park. This cart had fountain sodas, which was better, obviously, but some of them have bottled sodas. This cart also had popcorn, which Alan is clearly not sharing right now. 
Um, but I think it's really fun and a nice like part of the event that you can enjoy some classic Disney snacks as you make your way around. I did the math though, you'd have to, tonight we paid $99 each for our ticket, you'd have to eat over 16 Mickey bars to make your money back. So. Challenge accepted. Okay. Checking in on the wait times. Looks like Alien Throwing Sauce is five minutes. What else have we got going on? Runaway Road, we just did that. Millennium Pocket Sauce is on at 20? My gosh. Rockin's at 15. That'll probably cycle out a little bit more. Slinky Dog Dash, 25, also will probably cycle. Star Tours. Wait, Star Wars Rises at five minutes? Toy Story Midway Mania is at five minutes? And Tower of Terror is at 40. So we're going to Galaxy's Edge, right? Yeah. We away. I mean, I'm sorry. We have asked. To illustrate just how empty it is in the parks during these after hours events, Molly's over here um, doing this. She's She's got a dance happening. It's a one woman show. Complete with a Diet Coke for energy. If you're wondering why we're freaking out about Rise being a literal five minute wait, it's because it's the most popular ride in all of Walt Disney World. Walking into the park today, a very slow day, mind you, it had a 125 minute wait, five minutes. I've never seen that in my whole life. Hands up, hands up. Oh, first minutes, <laughs> promise I have one. I was like, for the spark? I don't know. <laughs> Quite literally never seen Rise the Resistance at a five minute wait since it opened. So I'm a little in shock right now. Rise of the Resistance is a fancy ride, which means if you're purchasing uh, access to skip the line, it is not included with Genie Plus. So it's usually around 15 to $25 per person to skip the line at this ride. And it often sells out very quickly for the whole day, which means the only way to ride it normally is wait in a very long line. Now Rise, I will say, dare I say it, is worth all of that hassle. Do you agree? Absolutely. I've only ridden it three times and would, would uh, agree, would hassle. Would hassle because it is the most immersive, I don't even want to call it a ride. It's an experience. It's a 20 plus minute experience that puts you inside Star Wars where you are joining the resistance to fight against Kylo Ren. Multiple ride systems, live actors, trackless vehicles, surprises around every turn, incredible animatronics, the music. I mean, it is just the greatest ride that's ever been built probably from an objective standpoint and um again five minutes this might be worth the ticket right here to this event hey, you're not Well, that is an amazing experience as usual. That ride is just chef's kiss as a bonus. I believe that was your first time seeing B-Mode Kylo Ren. That is true. He does have a nice ship. Too bad it Got gets blown up. Wrecked. Yeah, it does It does get injured. Now, that's made even better by the fact that it's a five minute wait. Literally just to walk through the queue. At this point, I'm looking at the wait times right now. I don't think anything, it says Smugglers is 20. I feel like that's Probably a joke. Slinky Dog 20. Hmm. Tower of Terror 13, which is a hint that it's a walk on. Everything huh. is like 15 or less. So I feel good that this event is awesome. Yeah, the wait times alone feel like it's worth it. Especially if you count up how much Genie Plus plus Fancy Rides would be for everyone in your party. And there's like no one here. Yeah. Another added perk of these after our events, specifically in Galaxy's Edge is that there are walk-up appointments for Savvies to craft your own lightsaber and the Droid Depot if you would like to make your own droid. So just another reason to come visit after hours because normally it's tough to get reservations and appointments to craft those lightsabers or make your own droid. So just another reason. Mm. Nothing like an empty Millennium Falcon right here. We just had a lovely photo pass photo shoot with the Millennium Falcon, which is another perk is that they do have photo pass photographers around. And um, Smuggler's Run has already dropped to a five minute wait, which is again a walk on. So we're gonna go smuggle some goods for Hondo we before. Get a snack and snuggle. Uh, and smuggle, <laughs> snack and snuggle. Snack and snuggle. Okay. All right, here's the lady. 
Yeah. Uh, yes, 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 yes. We love it. We love it. We love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Casamers are the best. So we are going to smuggle. Yes, and we snacked. Now we smuggle. We Not snuggle. I don't know. Maybe Hondo likes to snuggle. I don't know that Hondo's a snuggly guy. If you try and snuggle with Hondo, his like tentacles would stroke your face. Okay. I don't think I'd like that. Right. Personally. Why? Not for me, but not here to yuck your yums. Why? Why? It was why. We had a good... It was, it was, it was good. Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run is the attraction that puts you into the cockpit of the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. In one of three positions, you can be an engineer, the worst position, a gunner, the medium best position, and a pilot, the ultimate best position. Hopefully, since there's not many people here, we'll have no problem getting pilot seats. Now, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run is really fun if you're a Star Wars fan. I think the queue and stepping inside the Millennium Falcon alone make it worth it for a diehard Star Wars fan. For me, though, it's not my favorite attraction. However, with a five-minute wait, I am excited. Flashing button to take off. Pilot on the left. That's you! I flashed it right! <laughs> job mm -hmm. I think we completed the missions at a certain level of effectiveness I think some of us need a diagram between left and right anyway um, <laughs> yeah no weight and our own cockpit so a dream situation it was yeah very good time in addition to the freebie snacks that are included with the event, there are several dining locations that stay open. The milk stand here in Galaxy's Edge, Woody's Lunchbox, some of the places along Sunset Boulevard and near Rock and Roller Coaster as well. I do recommend eating a full meal before because it is such a late event and you may not want to spend time during the event going um, and eating your dinner. However, another great perk exclusively here in Galaxy's Edge is the fact that Oga's Cantina runs on a walk-up wait list only. Considering this is one of the hardest reservations to get in Walt Disney World, to go have a beverage at the local watering hole, it's a really fun perk of uh, the event. And we've got a little time before our next adventure we want to go on. It was not even a five minute wait, and now it's time to go visit Oka. I'm pretty sure that you remember all the rules, right? I remember yeah, all the rules. No kicking, no fighting, no biting. Yep, yep. Can't promise the biting, but I'll try. <laughs> try I'll, I'll do my best. Gonna be your space. Thank you. <laughs> A lovely little trip to Oga's Cantina. Any trip to Oga's is a fantastic trip to Oga's. Oga's is like part dive bar, part college bar, watering hole from space, powered by DJ Rex, the greatest DJ in the galaxy. Spin in the hits of today, tomorrow, and a long, long time ago. Far, far away. <laughs> I had a beer, the Trandarian. Trandosian. Trandosian. Nailed it. Ale. It was good. It was a wheat beer. Um, it wasn't my favorite beer I've ever had. They actually got rid of my favorite beer from space, the White Wampa, but it was okay. And I had the Bad Motivator IPA, which was... But we'd like to know what you're doing on that data pad. Uh, just talking to our friends. What are you doing? Not your concern. <laughs> That's fair. Cool. That seems cool. like a fair yeah. assessment of the situation. All right. Carry on. Thank you. But he's up on the channel scanning. Okay. Will do. Attracts attention. Will do. Yes. Aye, That's aye, fine. sir. So I, anyway. I, I thought we avoided them. They came into the cantina while we were in there, and I thought we had avoided them. 
<clears throat> but I think we should get out of Galaxy's Edge. What you're saying is, I'm wrong. <clears throat> I didn't want to tell you this, but I stole a bunch of money from Oga. What? Sir. Okay, so I one time I was flying my spaceship, as you do. Poorly, yeah, go yeah, on. I'm not great at it. And Honda was like, hey, do you want to make some extra money when you fly the spaceship? I was there for that. Yeah, but you missed the conversation. Hondo and I had, you were too excited about the Derejik board. And he was like, take this to Oka and then take a bunch of money um, and and bring it back to me. I, I don't have a chance to bring it back, but I think the stormtroopers know. Why didn't you deliver it as intended? Because... I thought maybe I could make more. You don't know the galactic stock market. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play the stock market. That'd be irresponsible. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make irresponsible. more. Irresponsible! You just stole so much money from I'm gonna make more money a responsible, reliable way. How? Gambling. What? I'm very good at sabak. And that, folks, was approximately three minutes of. Molly and myself doing a strange bit. Welcome to everyday life. But in other news, we have made it to Toy Story Land, which is much like the rest of the park, incredibly empty. So our goal is to head to Slinky Dog Dash and Dash and Slink and uh, and Dog while we're here. Slinky Dog Dash is also one of the most popular rides in all of Disney's Hollywood Studios. It often gets upwards of well over 100 minutes for a queue. But right now, I think we're sitting at five, which is incredible. Ten. Okay, Alan, don't exaggerate how fun this is. It's ten. Oh, no. I was five minutes over. However shall I recover from this? It has a 38 inch height requirement and it is fun for most of your family. It is actually a great introduction to roller coasters for young ones. Nothing. That was a walk on. That was a walk on. Ten minutes is a lie. Pish posh. It was a lie. But that ride's so fun. This is the one time I'll tolerate dishonesty. Also, ice cream. Ice cream. Toy Story Mania and Alien Swirling Saucers are also. Oh! Surprise fireworks. It's the fireworks from the projection show, um, which we already watched. But Toy Aww. Story Mania and Slinky Dog are also open, but we opted to get more ice cream. I met Bo Peep. Oh no. I nearly lost some chocolate. Oh, that would be a disaster. I understand your concern. Mm -hmm. And now we're headed to Sunset to see if we can knock out both tower and coaster with the like 40 minutes left of the event. How are you? It's been a while. You look great. I love your pants. They're so functional because you can like run and jump and get your sheep. Oh my gosh, it's so nice. How's Woody? Is he good? I love Mickey ice cream sandwiches. Mm -hmm. They're so good. Wow! That was very close and very loud. That was very fun. Now, Alan, I couldn't help but notice you got a Mickey Premium. A classic choice. Agreed. Do you prefer the Mickey Premium to the Mickey's Cookies and Cream Ice Cream Sandwich? <sighs> this is an oft-debated topic. Mm -hmm. And while I understand the allure, the draw, the delicate nuance of a Mickey's Cookies and Cream Ice Cream Sandwich, there is naught that could take me away from the temptation of a Mickey's Premium Ice Cream Bar. 
And so classic for a reason. Chocolate on the outside, vanilla on the inside. More than the sum of its parts. But Also in the shape of Mickey head, which is like, I mean, I know they share both of those, but I, I mean, come on. Did you, wait, hold on. Did you just drop the ice cream on your phone? Mm-hmm. And lick it off your phone? Uh-huh. Nice. No one needs to know. The camera's facing out. <laughs> I like both, obviously, but I love cookies and cream, so. Delish. Hey, no judgment here. Delish. And I'm glad they're both included. As we approach the Hollywood Tower Hotel to ride the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, uh, noticed that the wait time had jumped to about 30 minutes, which means that they're probably only one, running one elevator right now. So we took a left-hand turn on Sunset and uh, are now headed towards Rock and Roller Coaster. So it's a five-minute wait right now. If there's one thing I love about Rock and Roller Coaster, name it. It's that Aerosmith is the band featured, and and they're they're known for some big hits. Mm-hmm. Pink, Walk This Way, Sweet Emotion. Don't want to miss a thing. Ragdoll. From the smash hit film Armageddon. Okay, we already do this on the podcast. <laughs> weekly, at least. <laughs> uh, Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith presented by Haynes has a 48-inch height requirement. Four, eight, that's the highest height requirement inside of a Disney theme park. It's also the only attraction of Walt Disney World that goes upside down. Not once, not twice, but thrice. Thank you. It's known for its 0 to 60 takeoff in just 2.8 seconds. And because of all these things, it's got a very long wait during the day. It's incredibly popular. And it's a really good time. I always have a great time every time I ride Coaster. I almost kind of forget how much fun it is. And then I ride it, and I'm giggling ear to ear. So very excited to use this one as another walk-on tonight. Don't mind us, we'll be finished in just a minute. Hey, hey, yeah. hey. We got my favorite roller coaster. The roller coaster jam. Living it up when you're going down. It's that plus do look like a lady. Yep. Beautiful. Great attraction, <laughs> and there's about 20 or so minutes left, so we're gonna ride Tower of Terror, which has dropped back down to a 13 minute wait, AKA a walk on, and hopefully still have a few moments left for some popscorn. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror follows the story of a group of individuals who were subject to abject terror inside of an elevator one evening, as lightning struck, resulting in the closure of the hotel, but only to reopen for us, the guests who would ride again on this service elevator, up and down to our eventual exit in the gift shop, as one does in Walt Disney World. This ride is a great, though thrilling, and a little bit somewhat scarier uh, attraction than what you'd find for Guardians of the Galaxy over on the West Coast uh, in Disney California Adventure. It has a 40-inch height requirement. It is... For me, such a fun and classic attraction. I really love every time we get to ride it, and I'm looking forward to it this evening. As always. A classic. Other than the fact that we just noticed there's a man in a window up there. Why are we looking back at them? I feel like he's watching us. Yeah, that doesn't mean you make That's eye contact. literally a detail I've never noticed before. It's a horrifying detail, to be clear. Let's add another I'll, adjective in front of that. Always learning. Yeah, it's anyway, so good. Anyway, a great attraction. One of the longest lines in the park usually rivals Rise for the longest line. It's usually like Rise and then just under a tower. So to be a walk-on, amazing way to end the night. And we have just a few minutes left, which means I think one more treat. Snacks. Snacks. Here is a time update. We've taken another maybe dozen steps. We have three minutes to arrive at Popcorn. The stress is mounting. I feel sweat upon my brow. Knees weak. Arms are heavy. We are running as much as those other guests. All right, what I'm saying is we have our priorities right. But for snacks. snacks. <laughs> and over the horizon, sweet relief. As the silhouette of a popcorn cart, where we started our evening's journey of snacking, well now ended, and we have come full circle. A victory lap well earned. 
on this. All right, so bad news. <laughs> the cart we went to that started our evening is out of popcorn. So Molly is running. I nearly lost track of her with her zigging and zagging through <laughs> the streets of Hollywood Studios. Uh, well, alas. I'll make popcorn later. This too shall pass, I promise. <sighs> well, I, I didn't get my final popcorn. In hindsight, I should have picked up one of the boxes they were giving out in Toy Story Land. That would have been smarter, so learn from my mistake, but <laughs> we still got to ride, what, six of the best rides in Disney's Hollywood Studios. We went to Oga's Cantina. We saw Fantasmic. We saw a Wonderful World of Animation. Mm -hmm. We met Stormtroopers, Bo Peep, and Donald and Daisy, yep. and had snacks in... Snacks on snacks. Five-ish hours. That's a lot in five hours. Pretty good. Pretty good. Now, the Disney After Hours events are definitely an extra cost, um, so it may not be worth it for everybody, but I think this is a pretty good event. Absolutely. For what you're paying, if you compare that to what you're going to be doing throughout the day with Genie Plus and some of the fancy rides, I think the cost for this, at least what we paid for the cost for this, is well worth it for the amount that you're able to do in that time. Obviously, this is definitely more geared towards older kids, teenagers, adults. Yes. The main thing missing from Hollywood Studios is that the shows don't happen at night. If you really want to see Beauty and the Beast or Indiana Jones or Frozen, you're not going to get to do that if you solely come in for the After Hours event. But if your main goal is to ride a bunch of the best rides in the park, you can do that very easily. In spades. All that to say, I, w I would 100% do this again. I think it's well worth the cost for the amount that you get to do for my preference and what I like to do when I come to the parks. And it's just a no-brainer. And folks, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for coming with us to Hollywood Studios. We appreciate it. Make sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and follow us on social media if you're not already. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been magical. Now go watch Secrets of Disney's Hollywood Studios. Oh, yeah, do that. Bye. Bye.